USC and Purdue. They're receiving votes, so they're trying to make that last final postseason push to make it into the postseason of collegiate volleyball. And then for Ohio State, again, finishing out their home push here in the Cavelli Center. Tonight's alumni night, alumni weekend, the rest of the weekend as well, senior night on Sunday. And here's a look at the series tied as well. Three to three, Ohio State won that last meeting, three to one. And this is the first time the two teams are playing in the Cavelli Center. Yeah, the first time they played in Columbus, it was at Nationwide Arena. So a way bigger environment here at the Cavelli. It is way more compact. It's going to get loud. And for a team, of course, like the Huskies, going from the West Coast all the way here to the Midwest, that travel plays a factor. But when you look at how these these two teams have played with some of the strongest hitters on each for Ohio State, Emily Landot. And then, of course, for Washington, the outside hitter, Maddie Ensley, two of you are going to have to watch out for as they go head to head at the pins. Yeah, Maddie Ensley for Washington. She, so far this season, has 256 kills on the other end. Emily Landot, a name you hear a lot here in Columbus, 444 kills. So, two, as you mentioned, heavy hitters on the offensive side to keep an eye out for. There's Landot for the Buckeyes. She'll be celebrating her senior night on Sunday. And you talk about that senior night. It's the final time Landot will have the chance to play at home as a Buckeye. And of course, you see the two matchups against each other. Maddie Ensley, the work she had put in in the Pac-12, of course, now the first year in the Big Ten. And Emily Landot has been doing it for quite a long time here in Columbus. And no real surprise that these two are spearheading the offense of both programs. Not on the offense, too, but another stat there is that he says 24 aces apiece for both of these players. So expect to see them from the service line as well. It's going to be fun. Let's get the starting lineups for tonight's matchup. Let's start with the starting lineups for the visiting Washington Huskies. It's Audra Wilmis, Julia Hunt, Amani Bush, Molly Wilson, Maddie Ensley, Elise Haney, and the libero Lauren Bays. Rounding it out for the seven that you could see. Of course, six on the court at the beginning. Leslie Gabriel Foley, Leslie Tuiasa Sopo, Coach Tui, they call her, is leading the charge for the Huskies and for the Buckeyes. It's been their traditional lineup for quite a bit of time. Olivia Hasbrook, Mia Tuman. Emmy Selman, Riley Rader, Emily Landot, Grace Egan, and Eloise Brandui for Jen Flint Oldenburg here in her fifth season. Last time these two teams played each other, Sarah, a couple of years ago, of course, we talked about it was at Nationwide Arena. First time playing as conference opponents and at the Cavelli Center. We talked to Coach Tui pregame, and she said, you know, I just love this game. And now, of course, this expanded conference, you get to come to places that you normally didn't get to go to. And she said, luckily, the weather didn't follow us as poorly as it has. And as per usual, it's now raining here in Columbus like it always is in Seattle. Yeah, looking like Seattle weather here in Columbus, Ohio. But yes, Coach Gabriel just said, that these atmospheres for the Big Ten and the places that they get to play are just so exciting. And you're seeing it here tonight in the Cavelli Center, a big crowd. One of the fun things, too, one of Washington's players, Julia Hunt from Covington, Kentucky, we heard before the game that she is having over 130 people here tonight to watch her play. So looking for a sea of purple somewhere for Hunt. Yeah, you can definitely see it. It's behind the right side benches. Eventually, once we get into a little bit of action, you'll see it right behind Coach Tui and her bench. And this is the final home series of this 24 season for Ohio State. Before they head on the road to face Wisconsin and Minnesota, two ranked teams in the Big Ten that came here earlier in the season and beat the Buckeyes. Yeah, big rest of the matchup. We're scheduled for Ohio State, finishing out their homestand on Sunday against Indiana. It's also their senior night as well, which is going to be a big one. Some big names for Ohio State: Emily Landa, Riley Rader, being celebrated as those freshmen or as those seniors. Sydney Taylor as well. So some veterans that the Buckeyes have been used to on the court for the past few years. And they'll start with a freshman, Olivia Hasbrook, the libero for the Buckeyes. She's in red, the rest in white. Of course, you see the Huskies in their purple, and their defensive specialist in white. Start back with Hasbrook. There's Landot. It's her weekend, and she starts two strong Huskies with the first point. It's a rare miss by Emily Landot for the Buckeyes. She is hitting at a 229% for the season. And then we talked about these two pin hitters, Ensley, who's now back at the service line. Just the power that both she and Landot bring to their respective programs. Some of the strongest we've seen, of course, in the conference, but in the country itself. Not only that, a senior in Inslee and the grad student in Londot, two very veteran players for these two teams. Buckeyes reset, Tuman back up, Londot back line right to Inslee. Reset far side. 
That time it's blocked over at the opposite pin. And Selman tried that one from the outside. She's been strong for the Ohio State in the last few matches. She's played 16 so far. She didn't start until the 27th of September in a game against Southern California. But since then, 176 kills, 94 digs. That was Elise Haney who got the block at the far side pin. They'll go back to Selman. And that time she finds some space. A nice awareness by Selman. She tried a hard hit on the play before. Didn't really go very well. Went into that block and then just tipped that one right at top of the block and then to the middle of the coverage. We've luckily had the opportunity to cover this Ohio State team now for about a year or so. What have you noticed, especially with Selman, with her first time really getting involved in this lineup, that she's felt comfortable switching speeds and power? That's a crucial thing for hitters. And there's another big one for Ohio State. <laughs> and Selman again, is she kind of got you right on cue for that one. Exactly. But just the ability to find, not only switch the power, but have the awareness to know what type of power you need as well is huge. Because, for example, if you're just hitting all day, every day, then defensemen are going to be able to read that. So the ability to switch to kind of a slower hit, see that opening in the coverage is huge. Amani Bush tried to attack Londot. She says not today, and the Buckeyes up 3-2. Getting back to Selman, though. Former number one player in the state of Virginia, number five player in the United States, and the number two outside hitter. And this is for a number two recruiting class for Jen Flynn Oldenburg that said, hey, we're going to start as a younger team. There might be some difficulties after the service error from Tuman, but that just comes with some of the space and, and just the awareness of realizing this is a game of speed, a game of inches, and a game of power, and that takes quite a bit of time for incoming freshmen. It does take time, especially as a freshman, to see that she's already starting to develop. That awareness is huge. Lauren Bays back, had her serve right to Grace Egan. Selman flipping sides like she normally doesn't with Lon Dots, and that time it actually worked out. An attack error for Amani Bush. And Bush tried to send that one cross corner. It was a nice spot that she looked for. Hit it a little too hard and out of bounds. Selman already with a kill in this one. It's four to three early. Misfire, but a save from Bays in the back line. Bush, did she get it off the fingers? They say she did not. Another attack error for the Huskies. That was a close one there, and not in the cross, but on the line drive for Bush, who right now is hitting in the negatives at a negative 750. Normally at a 252 on the season. 251 kills, so top three for this UW squad. And she's really had to step into a big role with Kirsten Barton going out for the season after that game against number 10, Oregon. And that one was Wilmis on the right side, just a little bit too far and out of bounds. And there's a lot of power coming in for this outside hitting squad for Coach Tui. Wilma's 134 kills of her own, a career high 281 kills just last season. Was second on the team, but also Amani Bush getting involved. That was a nice spot by Bush. She found it in between Hasbrook and Selman on the cross court hit. It's six to four, Ohio State. Of course, set one. First to three in this set differential. Win by two as well. It goes five, it's first to 15, win by two. They'll switch sides at seven points. But of course, we still got plenty of time. Don't go anywhere. It's Londa, the OSU offense trying to set it up. But Bays will reset for Bush. And right to Tuman. Far side, Egan. Right to the ground, a good stop from Bays. They reset Egan that time. She finds the corner. A nice spot there by Egan. Hit the cross court just on the line. But you do have to credit that defense as well for Washington, that first big hit by Egan to be able to get the dig and back over for the rest of the volley. And they're bringing in Zoria Hurd as well, the Texas A&M Corpus Christi transfer, who played in three sets in their most recent match against Northwestern, and the Buckeyes get a service ace. It's this first service ace of the match so far. And Coach Tui wants to take a timeout as the Buckeyes are up four early in set one on Big Ten Plus.
Ohio State leading early, 8-4 here at the Cavelli Center. Sarah Shar, Boston Kroom along with you. And partner, this is going to be a game of power against power. We talked, of course, about Maddie Ensley, but Amani Bush, look at what she did last game against Northwestern. She had 13 kills, five service aces, which we'll get to in a little bit, which was her career high at that point. And she's got the lone kill so far for the Huskies and already getting involved on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and Bush with 251 kills so far this season. There's a kill for Egan on the Ohio State side. But Bush with 251 kills so far this season. She's also got two double-doubles. She missed last season, 2023, with a shoulder injury, but in 2022 was all Pac-12 honorable mention, and she's picked right back up in the 2024 season. It is still so awkward to see a school like Washington now in the Big Ten, of course, last just as soon as last year. They were in the Pac-12, along with a bunch of other schools that went into either the Big Ten or Big 12. And that time, Bush gets one off the arm of Tuman. Bush there with the second kill for Washington. The only two kills for the team, but yeah, it has been a shift from that Pac-12, and that was something that Coach Tui had talked about too. The time difference is something that they have to take into account coming to play here in Columbus. I know most people think about it when you talk about that time difference in football, of course, because that somewhat rules and runs collegiate athletics. But you now have to think that Coach Tui said they got here on Wednesday. I mean, that was as early as two days ago as the Buckeyes are going to get a point on the penalty or the error, I should say, from Washington. But just the amount of travel you have to do to feel comfortable, get acclimated with the time zone and with either the weather, the climate, and just the playing facility itself. There's a lot that goes into this. There is. I mean, it's 4 p.m. Pacific time for Washington when this game started, so a little bit of a variation from what Ohio State's dealing with at that 7 o'clock p.m. I mean, that does make it a little bit easier going, I guess, from West Coast to the East Coast, or at least at the Midwest in this sense. And that's a great service ace from Londot. And Londot, who we talked about before the game, had 24 service aces, so there's a 25th for her on the season. And it was a head-to-head -head matchup against Maddie Ensley, who came back in just for this rotation. She went out for Zoria Hurd. Let's get it back in after the Londot serve. Wilson sets it up, and a Buckeye block stops it again. It's Brandwee. Brandwee and Egan on that double block for Ohio State. That's their third. He's up by seven. Still, of course, plenty of time to go in this one. Washington, they're receiving votes at 19-7. Ohio State at 12-14. and 14. Different tra trajectories for both of these programs. We even talked about it a little bit. Ohio State just trying to end on a high note. Coach Flynn Oldenburg said, hey, we realize that our chances of the NCAA attorney are somewhat out the window at this point, but you want to start and end in similar fashion. You want to end on a high note. Against this Washington team, and then you mentioned the two other strong teams they have to play afterward. And again, not a lot of pressure for Ohio State. Just come out, perform, and see if they can do their best. CUNY Fletcher hits it off the libero of Hasbrook, and the Buckeyes reset with Egan, and it stays alive. That time, Ensley. Brandwee with the slide and a good save. Free ball, Buckeyes try to take it, and they do. And a nice fight at the net by Ohio State. At first, it almost looked like Inslee got her hand on it and was able to get it onto the Ohio State side, but out of bounds, and the Buckeyes are on a 4-0 scoring run. And you've seen some of those free balls that they go up, and it's really a waiting game. Is it going to go the way? of hitting the ground for you, or is it going to even be on your side of the court that you are able to make contact with it? That time, the slow touch from Julia Hunt, the middle blocker, as she gets her first kill. And those free balls are so crucial because if you're a team and you send a free ball over the net, that gives the opposing team a lot of opportunity to use that to set themselves up well, or if it's close enough to net, get a nice attack on it immediately. Now that's also why it's so important to get out to an early lead, which luckily the Buckeyes have done so far in this one. But the way that UW has really propelled themselves into the Big Ten trajectory in the standings. They're somewhat middle of the pack at this point, but there's still so much time. But when you have service errors like that and you give it right back to the Buckeyes, it does not help the flow in the rotation sense. And that's a huge mistake here, too, just because Ohio State is up by so much right now. So any point counts for the Huskies, like that error as well. When you flip it over, so from service error for the Huskies to service ace for the Buckeyes and Egan. 15 to 6, Ohio State leading at home. The in set number one. Buckeyes now have three service aces, sorry, four now, just tonight. Hit over, that was Haney. 
And the Buckeye defense stops it again. It seems that they are on quite a roll, whether the scoring run continues or if it's on the defensive side of things. That scoring run and also looking offensively, you talked about the defense, but negative still in the percentages for the Huskies. Negative 250 is their hitting percentage. Ohio State not looking great either, but sitting out of 143, which has helped them keep this lead. Alexis Howery just came out of the game. She's normally number eight. Today she's wearing number zero, so just thought we'd put that out there for you guys at home. And you got to watch for number 18, Maddie Ensley with a lot of power. And that's Inley, Ensley's first kill of the evening. Had a career high, 341 kills last year with 20 double-digit kill matches. She wasn't even all Pac-12 as of last year. Last Pac-12 team she was a part of, as Brandewey finds and cuts the defense, was the 2020-2021 Pac-12 All-Freshman team. So the numbers that she's put up have been so incredible, and yet the Pac-12, of course, with Stanford at the time and Arizona and Arizona State and Utah, was one of the hardest to get recognized because of the power of it. Yeah, lots of competition there, but Inslee definitely did make her presence known, as you mentioned, and she led the team in kills and kills per set last season. Inslee with the save. Wilmers can only hit it over. But guys will try that time. It's Selman. Selman with her second kill, just behind Grace Egan with three. Another timeout taken for Coach Tui. Buckeyes up 11 in set one on Big Ten Plus. Buckeyes only seven points away from taking set one. The Huskies going to try to extend this one as long as they can. Sarah Sharp, Boston Kroom along with you. Thank you for joining us. On, if you're in the Columbus area, it's probably rainy. If you're in Seattle, a little unsure of what the weather is, but probably also could be raining. It's but a good bet. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty warm here, at least in the Cavelli Center. And you can see both teams trying to play with fire. Buckeyes finding it at this point. They're up 19 to 7. Almost with the attack error on the outside there, keeping that Huskies hitting percentage in the negatives. You don't see that too often for teams under Coach Tui. Hasbrook will start back again. Gets down to Bayes, the libero, flip it back up. Haney saves it, and the Buckeye defense is ready. Egan, back line, too much power. A difficult hit there for Egan in the back row, and then Selman tried to set that one up off of pass, but just a little bit out of tempo, and the Huskies took advantage. If you're Washington, how crucial is it to get Ohio State out of tempo? Well, that's a big part of it, just because if they have the opportunity to stay in tempo and then get a decent set up to the hitters that they have on their front line, that's huge. You know that the Buckeyes have powerful hitters up there, like Londot and Egan so far in this game. Raider even in the middle, and Selman on the outside too. So. Not letting Ohio State get those good passes and those good sets up for solid hits is important. Ensley comes out, Zoria Hurd goes in after her service error. The Buckeyes just need five, they'll go to Selman, but the double block of the other side with Ensley and Wilmus to let UW get another point. It's a big block there for Washington, only their second so far tonight. 
two teams that are oddly similar in the way that they play. They have the powerful pin hitters, of course, the two big blockers that you could bring out. And yet in this one, it has started off very lopsided so far for the home team Buckeyes. And it looks like it's going to keep going that way as Londot finds the second row of the student section. And that was Londot's first kill of the night. So Ohio State already up 21 to 9, and Londot hasn't even registered an attack, something that Washington does not want to see. And it's somewhat crazy saying that. She has not registered an attack at this point, and there's been 30 combined points in set one. Julia Hunt found some space behind me at Tuman. It's 21 to 10. Hunt with her second kill as well. Also has a dig to go along with it. And send back Audra Wilmus. And a Wesleyan Oregon. Right to Egan. Tuman. Landon soft touch. Save from Bays, but hits it off the knuckles. And again, like we had just talked about it, it makes you wonder what could be the different score already? Again, Ohio State up by 12. What could be the difference if Londa had been more active in this first set? Which she's starting to get hot here at the end. But that's just another hitter to add on to the, for the Buckeyes. Riley Ryder going back. Buckeyes just need three to take the first set. It's going to take a lot. They set it up for Bush. And Selman keeps it alive with the palms. Right to Egan. Double block, but out. And the Buckeyes get another point. And Egan has such a strong swing. You've seen it in a lot of her attacks so far tonight. Just hits it so hard and into that block, but with enough strength that it goes on the other end of the court. So the Buckeyes took out Hasbrook. Of course, Raider, who just served, is in for her, going for a second in a row. Also going to be a big weekend for her at Lawn Dots. Sydney Taylor as well, as it is their final home weekend of their collegiate careers, which... Coach Flynn Oldenburg talked about it's going to be odd because they've been there five years. I've been here five years. It's going to be an odd and somewhat sad day when we walk into the practice facility without them. But they just need one more, so Coach isn't worried about that right now. Bush goes up. Save Raider. Two minutes to Can Kenshi in the first set. Buckeyes trying to stay alive. Flynn Oldenburg is immediately walking. They're saying it was a net violation for OSU, and she'll take out the green challenge card. Yeah, Coach Jim Flynn Oldenburg doesn't agree with that one as it looked like it was just knocked out of the net, but then that violation was called. And now that we have the time, there is a connection between Jen Flynn Oldenburg and Leslie Gabriel, which, of course, now it's Gabriel. It's Tuliasa Sopo was her, or is her maiden name. Both of them had the opportunity to play together in the global games back, I believe she said in 1999, 98, which of course you and I were not alive. Sorry for those of you at home who just had to hear that and go, oh my goodness, how young are they? A little before our time. A li little, be little before our time. And I, I think Coach Flynn Oldenburg and, and Coach Tui both realized that, but they both, I mean, talked levels about each other. The competitiveness, the love they have for the game, the will to push each other, and just the ability to have fun in certain sections and difficult opportunities as well. When you talk about these global games, you're the best in your country going up against the best around the world. And that says a lot. And the fact that they could find a way to be here coaching different programs and helping each other out really shows a lot. But the Buckeyes, they win, I believe, set one, at least after overturning it. Well, no, they do not. Based on the reaction, it looked like they might have, but I guess not. Still Ohio State up significantly though, so Washington has to make a huge comeback if they want to have any chance of getting this first set. Oh, they took the point away, I should say. Thank you, Sarah, for setting me up for that <laughs> one. Buckeyes trying to stay alive, a couple punches. Extra hit for Londots, and that time they'll be back at 11. Bonnie Bush with the student section right behind her. Buckeyes just need a point to take set one. Off the top of the netting, Buckeyes will try it. Juan Dutch, she's got it. Set one goes to OSU.
percentage. Ohio State at a 269, and then Washington at a negative 154. That is some numbers you don't see too often for Coach Tui with as powerful pin hitters that she has. Yeah, and that's something that I'm sure they talked about in that huddle to clean up is those attack errors coming into the second set. Also to mention, too, the Buckeyes with three service aces. Huskies don't have any, so they've been dominating from the service line as well. So both teams will flip sides. Ohio State now on the right. Huskies on the left. An interesting one, too, as Ohio State is going into the side out. Ohio State's side out percentage is a 90.9. Washington at a 41.7, so that's a huge difference in percentage as well. Molly Wilson, the junior out of Murray out of California. We'll start off set number two. Egan gets down, there's Tillman. Swing side Raider, you don't see that too often. Ends it with a free ball, pushed over by Fletcher. Selman opposite side, she gets a kill. Selman in second right now in kills for Ohio State. Her and Londa both have three behind Egan with four. And we asked Coach Jen Flynn Oldenburg about Emmy Selman, how she's been, of course, with a, a heavier class with Emily Londa and, of course, Riley Rader at the top, the grad students, how she felt about her freshman. And she said, man, I wish we could have gotten her sooner. First time she played was September 27th at USC. And when you can have her out there, that's the kind of flow you see. The Buckeyes will get service aces. You can run her on either pin. And you have to look at her height as well. She's six foot four on the outside. She is, which is also big for a block as well. So you'll see her go up there on the net. But you mentioned, too, just her ability to play on both sides of the ball. She can hit from the right side. She can hit from the outside. And that's huge as well. She tried to set up Egan. Got her hand two on top of it right into the netting. And the Huskies have their first point of the second set. That's a rare miss for Egan so far in this game. She's hitting at a 333 percentage. And ever since they got her back from that hitch where she didn't play for a little bit of the season, re-aggravating the injury from last season, she's been looking very comfortable and confident on the floor. And that time it's a service ace for Maddie Ensley getting back to her and Londa going head to head on those aces. Yeah, Londa and Ensley back to tied at 25. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why not keep her back there? It's 2-2 in set two. Ensley Selman had it off. Londot tries it. Whistle blown. I believe they're going to call for a reset. A towel from Molly Wilson got onto the playing server, so they have to blow it dead, and they'll redo the serve. Yeah, that's not something that you see very often. I don't think I've actually seen that in the two or so years I've been covering Ohio State volleyball on Big Ten Plus, just any of their games in general. I don't believe we've mm -hmm. ever seen anything like that happen. You even had time playing. Have you seen that happen in your time? Um, I haven't, but also I don't see a lot of players who have towels to keep with them when they're playing, but I can see how it could be an advantage as well. Selman goes up top and off the fingertips. She's doing it all so far. You talk about her at the blocks. They can have her on the swing. You can have her go near pin, far pin, and that time on a free ball. She also has two digs, too, so she can play defense as well. I mean, one of the reasons Coach Flynn Oldenburg was so happy that they had gotten her in the recruiting class and get her to commit what they're doing in Columbus, and that time it's a service ace for her. And Selman, you mentioned her height, too, at six foot four, so her ability to not only play as a front row hitter, but to also play defense in the back row is huge as well. She had five digs in their last game against Rutgers. She has 94 digs on the season. Fletcher had it. A joust to the top, and it'll reset. Bush flips sides. That might hit us. And that's a point for Washington. Bush did a nice job hitting that one in between the blockers who are Raider and Londot. The setup for Lauren Bays as she'll go back to serve. The 2021 Pac-12 All Freshman Team. Egan too strong. 
That's the second time that we've seen Egan struggle with that cross hit a little bit from the outside, hitting it with a little bit too much strength, not enough snap of the wrist to keep it in bounds. And you talk about the difference between the strength and just the, the wrist location. Does that play and have more of an impact than most people think on a swing? Does, like, I would say the location has a difference because you have to move your wrist to where you want that ball to go. And it's a lot more difficult if you're an outside hitter to try to hit it cross because you're shifting your entire arm than it would be to hit it line. See, it's, it's some things you, you don't necessarily think about in that sense. And that's when you look at teams that can switch what side of the pin that they're playing on as well. So for Selman, something she's got to think about. Egan, something to think about. Londot, something to think about. And then, of course, Ensley on the other side and Amani Bush to go along with her. It does, and you don't really realize that there's Londa with the line drive from the right side, but a lot of times for a hitter who's hitting on the right side, it's probably easier to hit a cross ball because you're able to cross your arm with your body. It kind of goes with your momentum a little bit better, but when you're hitting from the outside trying to hit a cross, it's a little bit more of an uncomfortable motion because you're twisting your arm in a way that you wouldn't really naturally as much as if you were hitting it from the right side. The 6-2 grad student out of Louisville, Riley Raider with a setup. Strong hit over from Fletcher, but the Buckeyes keep it alive. You're going to try from about six and reset after Bays hits it. Over the middle, Julia Hunt, the middle blocker, with a lot of pop. And that was a nice kill there by Hunt. Not a lot of middle action from either of these teams offensively-wise. So that's one of the first middle hits that we've seen in this match. I was going to say, the one kill that Brandewee has has been that traditional slide that she does to the far side, and they get her to just find that paint right in the middle. But you can't use it too often because the defense will start to realize it. Maybe that's why she only has a single kill so far. And that is where you commonly see Brandewee from the offense is on the slide and hitting it from the right side, which throughout the season maybe hasn't been as common because defense is no to read for that, that that's her common place that she's going to go for that attack. And what you just saw there is the MO for Emily Landon. She's going to face you. She's not afraid to go against a one-on-two on two on the block. She'll hit it with a lot of power. But then she can go back and serve, and one of the best in this OSU roster as well. Just punched over from Brandewee. Try back Bush, met at the top for Brandewee and Tuman, but out of the reach of Egan. Bush with a fifth kill, and she's tied with Londa, who just had that kill to play before, both at five for the afternoon. And you could see that whatever Coach Tui had said between set one and two is working for them. It's now only a one-point game as Washington's going to try to keep it with Bush. A line drive just over the top of the tape. Wilson set up. Ensley push, reset again. Selman with the southpaw touch. Stayed live in the volley, and the Buckeye block. Egan and Brandewee have done it again. Big block there by Brandewee and Egan. And you see Brandewee's name a lot when it comes to the block. She's leading Ohio State. She led the team last year with 90 blocks. And so far this season, she's exceeded that. She's at 107 total blocks. She's got 94 assisted, but also 13 solo. I mean, her best game is a career high eight total blocks at USC back in September. I mean, you could see right here when they go up against the pin, whether you're sliding or not, Egan and Brandewee, the way that they shadow each other and slide over to it, it's hard to stop at any level. And she had eight blocks in that game against USC, but also total blocks against Miami in September as well, so she's been hot this season. Uh, that Miami game was something. The Cavelli was jumping. It was the first home game for Ohio State of the season. And the crowd intensity has stayed true, and so is Audra Wilmus jumping out of the gym with that kill. And that was a nice hit by Wilmus, especially from the back row to still get that wrist snap and good attack. Wilma's joining the kill party with the Huskies. It was only her first of this one. Amani Bush with five, Julia Hunt with three. And then Wilma's and Ensley have a single one of their own. Tuman tried the fake pushover. Trying to keep it. And the Huskies strike back Molly Wilson. And the Huskies are evening things out in this second set. Now tied with Ohio State, both have four blocks. You even talked about that block differential at the beginning. And as it slowly starts to get closer, Ohio State getting a little closer in attack errors as well. 10 for the Huskies, now 11. But Ohio State with seven. So something to just 
think about when getting closer to it. Yeah, that service error there for the Huskies is their third. So just as you mentioned, things getting a little bit closer, and that's why you're seeing a closer game in the second set. Yeah, the attack errors, the service errors. The hitting percentage back at zero for Washington for the first time, as at least in the positive side of things, and they'll get it back up too. And trading service errors are the two teams, but again, looking at that hitting percentage, they're out of the negatives at that flat zero, but Ohio State also not hitting very well either at an, a 186, so low percentages for both teams. What is the side out percentage telling you currently? It's getting a little bit closer than what it was when I mentioned it before the second half, but it's still Ohio State at 50 compared to 23, and that's a big differential. Or sorry, I'm looking at the wrong percentage, but 50% for Washington, 76 for Ohio State. So that's a big differential for the Buckeyes that they're leading in side outs, which is just showing you that they're playing better defense off of those serves. Tuman back to serve after she got some support with Egan along with the kill. It's 10 to nine, Washington. Odd one off the hands of Barton. We have seen her now for the first time since the 30th of October against Oregon. And another service ace for Ohio State. They just keep getting further and further away from the Huskies in that percentage. Now they have six as opposed to one for Washington. That's also a big piece to have back. Barton, who, like we talked about, did not play since that matchup against number 10 Oregon. She played in five sets and had 20 kills. Yeah, that's been a huge missing piece for the Washington offense. You mentioned that she had 20 kills in that last game, also nine digs. And for the season high, she had 22 kills. So she is a big offensive player, four double-doubles this season. And it's good to see her back for these Huskies team. Off the odd side of the hand for Fletcher. It's an attack error, and it's 11-10 OSU. It seemed that at that point after that game against the Ducks, that Barton may not be available for the remainder of the season, and yet here she is in a big piece to have for Coach Tui and a very important stretch of the season. And Raider strikes the floor. Yeah, that was a huge missing piece, offensively and defensively. She can play both ends, so that's been a big missing part for the Huskies team as a whole, but Riley Raider getting active for the Buckeyes there with her first kill of the night. Ohio State on a 4-0 scoring run. Tried it for Ensley. And off the top of the block, and it's still within one. Inslee collecting her second kill. Amani Bush, Bush coming back in for Kirsten Barton. So it seems that Barton, the few chances she'll have in the rotation, will probably be very crucial ones in the middle of a set, which you may not think about when this is all said and done because of what the points could be, but playing very important minutes as Emily Londot keeps doing what she's been doing for four straight seasons. Another big one for Londot, but yeah, Barton came in, she played some defense in the back row and then was switched back out in the front row for Bush. So it'll be interesting to see what type of role Coach Tui has her play tonight. Londot six kills on 11 swings. Someone right behind her with four, she's back at the service line. CUNY Fletcher with the most recent swing and off the shoulder of Lauren Bays. See the face of the Buckeyes on that one. Even they're a little shocked at that power. A big hit there by Lana targeting the libero too for Washington. Her seventh kill. She's hitting at a 500 percentage right now. And keep it going. Selman hot from the service line, her second ace. Timeout taken for Coach Tui. She has taken three to Ohio State's zero timeouts so far through these two sets. We'll step aside, Ohio State up by four.
Ohio State out of the Husky timeout. They're up by four. Sarah Sharp, Austin Kroom along with you. We didn't get to hit on it a little earlier, and it's talking about Emmy Selwyn. The game she has had and the season she's having is one of the best I believe I've seen a freshman have in a while. And, of course, right on cue, the announcer jinxes service error. Yeah, you jinxed her a little bit on that one. <laughs> My apologies. But despite that error, she still, as you mentioned, has had such a strong season for Ohio State, especially coming in as a freshman. Ohio State still up three. And against the University of Washington Huskies. First time they've played each other at the Cavelli and as Big Ten opponents. Even series at three apiece. Serve over from Bayes Libero. There's a fake out for Raider instead. Egan takes it. Egan with the power once again. She's got her fifth kill of the evening. She's just behind Emily Landot. Egan, Selman, and Landot. The top three for Ohio State. Seven kills, five kills, and four kills in that order for Landot, Egan, and Selman. Take a second to make sure the floor is all good to go. And the Buckeyes have increased their hitting percentage, too, after that hit by Egan. They're now in the 200s at a 260. Washington still hitting at that flat zero. Ohio State on the season is hitting at a 202. So this is upping the ante on their swinging side of things, and it's definitely shown as they're up by four. hurd has got to save it on the awkward ball. That time it's Fletcher. And too far out of the reach of her teammates. And Ohio State starting to really take a lead in this second set now up by five. And Washington needs to turn it around soon as it's getting late in the second. We also know how crazy the Big Ten is, though. You have the opportunity to get in at set three and go, okay, it's looking tough, but we have time. And that's just the strength and the power of the conference itself. And he's saying there's a violation on the Huskies at the net. Buckeyes get the extra point up by six. Yeah, it seemed like Wilson went up to try to touch that ball, but it was called that it was on the Ohio State side. And so she interfered with the ball on the wrong side of the court. Wilmus comes in. Fletcher goes out. CUNY Fletcher, the former Carolina Gamecock, has stepped up last year. She had 245 kills. Of course, this season in the 160 range as her team is starting up with Wilmus. But that was 41 more than her previous three seasons combined with South Carolina. And 2024 so far, she has 164 kills, also 57 digs. She didn't play in the last game versus Northwestern, but she last played against UCLA on the 13th. She's coming here and made a presence for the Huskies. Big hit off Selma. The Buckeyes will try it with the sky ball and Egan. <laughs> Egan's playing like she's on a burner today. Yeah, she's had a big game for Ohio State. And when you put her and Londot together on opposite sides of the pins, that's a dangerous front row. Speaking of, Londot back. 19-13 in set two. Bush met with the blockers. And that one was Tuman and Brandewi on the block. Brandewi's fourth block of the evening. And another timeout taken for Coach Tui. Buckeyes just need five to take set two and go up 2-0 on Big Ten Plus. Sarah Sharp and Austin Kroom along with you. Thank you for joining us and enjoying some of your night watching some collegiate women's volleyball. Slondon back to the line off top of the tape, right to Bush. She'll set it back up off of Wilson. Selman away from Hasbrook, and even the pinball couldn't stop it. Buckeyes just need four. And a nice back row hit from Selman. Buckeyes almost at a total 300 of a hitting percentage. This set alone, they're hitting at a 308. Their total for the night, a 288. When your coach wants to end on a hot streak, of course, coming off of that three-set victory over Rutgers as well, you have to ride that heat streak. If you can do it, and Coach Lynn Oldenburg realizes that they're playing Indiana on Sunday, and then, of course, going to Wisconsin and Minnesota to end the season, two very difficult matches. But it's the Big Ten. Anybody can beat anybody at this point. 
And the Buckeyes have been hot lately. They've won four of their last six matches, and they're looking good here tonight against Washington. They're 12 and 14 on the season. Washington at 19 and 7, trying to get that 20th win, and Julia Hunt's trying to help them. Bush back to serve. It's a seven point lead for Ohio State. And the Huskies came out closer in this second set to begin with. It was within one, and then Ohio State so far has pulled back into the lead. What a save from Hasbrook, but she hit it the opposite direction. It was nice hustle there by the Buckeyes, but an even better serve by Bush. Second service ace for Washington. It looked like for a second it was going to go right into the stands. The fact that Hasbrook even got to it is impressive. See, she tries to attack her again. Time she goes to Selman, but it doesn't help her. Hensley for the second time. Tuman back to Egan after the setup. Luckily, pulling the hands back for Bays. Ohio State not happy with that one. They seem to think that there was a touch on the hit, but the point goes to the Huskies. Keep working it with Imani Bush as well. 21-16, OSU leads. A one-set lead. They try the slide. It's the second time they've tried with Brandewey. It doesn't work on it. And another point for Washington. And Brandwee, again, the second time they tried that one, but didn't go well, and she's hitting at a flat zero. And a 4-0 scoring run for Washington. So Flynn Oldenburg wants a timeout, and we'll take it with him. It's within four in set two. Ohio State up by four against the Washington Huskies in set number two. And there is Coach Leslie Gabriel. Of course, Leslie Tuiasa Sopo is her maiden name, Coach Tui. It's her second season as the head coach of the Huskies. See her record there as well, but she has been invested in this program. One of the slogans of Washington is wear purple, bleed gold. And she has sure done that. She's been a part of this organization and the college itself for her entirety of her collegiate playing career, one of the best middle blockers in Pac-12 history. And when talking to her pre-match, she said, hey, you know, I love it here. You know, of course, everybody I know. And when the job opening was first posted, Coach Flynn Oldenburg called her and said, you got to take this job. It's in your blood to do it. And here she is just a couple years later at the helm. Yeah, and she mentioned when talking to Coach Flynn Oldenburg that she had said that there's just nothing like coming back to the school where you played as well, because you know that atmosphere. You have been in it before. And she just said that she's been here for two seasons now just with Washington and loving it. Uh, the two seasons at the helm, she has been an assistant in this program for quite a long time, 10 plus years. And the block between Wilson and Hunt will set it back up within three. Tooman somehow saves it. The only thing they can do is reset to get back in system. That time slide with Hunt, and she strikes again. And the Buckeyes were looking strong, but struggling late in this second set. A 6-0 scoring run for the Huskies. It's those adjustments you make, even if it's a 45-second timeout, there's a lot that can be said with your rotations, with how you want to set up a defense, and especially when you have incredible serving from Imani Bush back-to-back. -back. 
And there is a service You've error. You've been jinxing them all tonight. I've done it, what, is that twice, three <laughs> times at this point? It's something like that. And this game getting closer now, despite that service error, and they were down 13 to 21. It almost looked like Ohio State had this second set sealed, but you have to give a testament to this Washington team to bring this set closer. I mean, they were doing it in the Pac-12 last year. Talked to Coach Two, he said it was a down year. It's 16 and 15 in total. But the year prior in 2020, they went 20 and 11 and made the NCAA tournament. So it's a team that knows what they're doing. It's just sometimes seasons happen, and that's just what really goes with the pendulum swing of collegiate athletics. That's the biggest thing for this team right now. They're trying to make that postseason run, and you never know, Ohio State up right now, 23 to 19, and this would be a big loss for the Huskies if they don't get it against Ohio State. The Buckeyes are trying to stop it, and you can clearly see it. The way that they have been tapped in, it's that connection that you play for a full season, you hope it hits at one point, and here it is. Huskies got to try to do it. Two tries for Ensley. Soft touch for Brandui, and the Buckeyes need another point to take set two. And one thing that I've noticed is Ensley is struggling with the block on that outside. There's been a lot of touches by Ohio State on the net against her attacks. The final timeout taken in set two for Coach Tui. We'll take it with the Buckeyes just need a point to go up two sets to none. Buckeyes a single point away from taking the second set in this one. They're up one set to none. And as much as the players on the court have been dominating, it's their woman at the helm, Jen Flynn Oldenburg, who's been leading them now in her fifth season with Ohio State. And Jen Flynn Oldenburg with a total record of 88 and 52, a 629 as her record with Ohio State. One of the many alum that are recognized tonight, 30 plus. Ohio State, mainly the 2004 team, which we'll hit on a little bit more later. As Egan's going to try to get the final point in set two. Buckeye rotation going back to what they started with. Same with the Huskies. Wilson, Hensley, save from Hasbrook. Selman tries to get it. Hensley and Tuman on the joust. Hensley again off the shoulder of Londot, and they stay alive and bring it within four. That's snapping a 3-0 scoring run for Ohio State. Now that side out percentage. You have to take a look at 67.7 for OSU and 43.8 for UW. And it's huge here for the Huskies to stop the side out by Ohio State as one more point, and they'll take the second and go up two to nothing in this match. Julia Hunt back to serve with the script Buckeye logo. Odd free ball, Tuman just tries to push it, and the defense stops him. Inslee finds right in front of the back line. And I mentioned right before that timeout that Inslee had struggled with the block against Ohio State, a lot of her balls getting touches on the Ohio State block, slowing those down, making it easier for the Buckeyes to dig those up. But in that one, she found the nice opening in between the Buckeye block. Four kills now for Ensley. Hasbrook slides with a save. Londot, Selman, and a reset. Wilson, Ensley right in front of Selman. U-Dub still fighting, it's within two. And that is a player that the Huskies need to see more active as she grabs her fifth kill. And Ohio State rightfully so takes a timeout. They want to stop the 3-0 scoring run of Washington as set two is getting closer on Big Ten Plus. Buckeyes a single point away from taking set two in their final homestand of the 2024 season. The Buckeye faithful, the vibes are high here at the Cavelli. They realize the situation. You want to try to get 
a much needed set two and a potential victory over a team in the Huskies that are still searching for their NCAA chances. Ohio State fans getting loud and Jen Flynn Oldenburg talked about the support of these fans in the Covelli and how great it's been over this season. Hunt still back 24-22 OSU. Two men line, dot into the stands. Buckeyes take set two. That's the way you want to start this one off. A team receiving votes in the Huskies, and you have them down two sets to none. And nobody better to finish that second set off than Emily Londot. Londot having a weekend, and the power she's had. The Utica, Ohio native been doing it for four years. This her fifth on the final hurrah here at the Cavelli. We'll step aside for a couple minutes. Set three coming up on Big Ten Plus. Plus alum came out in between the two sets and the crowd cheering a couple thousand plus with some of the best names to ever wear the Scarlet and Gray. Yeah, and you mentioned that 2004 team, a 30 and four overall record. They have tied the program record for most wins in a season under head coach Jim Stone. One of those big alumni that was out there today is Stacy Gordon, probably the most dominant Ohio State volleyball player in history. Jen Flynn Oldenburg had a lot of great things to say about Gordon as a player. She was a four-time All-American. She was a member of that 04 team. She was named the 2004 AVCA Co-National Player of the Year. And just, she's leading Ohio State still in so many records. She has the record for career kills, kills per game, kills in a season, and points and points per game. So just too many to list, honestly, but a powerful alumni and then some others as well for Ohio State who came out to support. I mean, yeah, you and I talked about it pre-match that we were trying to cut down to a couple of points that you want to bring up of where are you in the, the leadership sense in the record books. And we both kind of agreed that there's too many to really pick, what, four or five or even three. But then you talk about some of those other alum, Karen Allsbrook, Ohio State's first All-American coming back, and Sarah Sue Morbitzer even from last year's season and her incredible story. I mean, there's a lot that runs true in the tradition here at Ohio State. You always hear that sense of the tradition, but the same can be said about the University of Washington and their time in the Pac-12. And it's just nice to see all of those alumni coming out from all years. You mentioned Morbitzer from last year and then first All-Americans as well. So a nice range of alumni for the Buckeyes. Selman starts set number three with a kill of her own. That's now her sixth on the afternoon. Hasbrook going back to the line. Four assists in this one as well. Of course, Tooman the main setter with 19. Right to the hands of Ensley. Bush soft touch, met at the top and the blocks do it again. That time it was Raider and Mia Tuman. The big blocks there for Ohio State. And that's the third block tonight total for Riley Raider, the middle blocker who's been so crucial for Ohio State the past five years. That final season, Coach Flynn Oldenburg said she has not really talked to Londot or Raider about it. She knows that, of course, come the match on Sunday against Indiana, as that's a great save from Hasbrook, the freshman. Londot tries to finish it. Bush saves it. Back Ensley. Punch Selman. Try again. Selman in the corner. And a nice spot there by Selman. The one before didn't go. The block got a hold of it, but she didn't lose her confidence and found a nice cross court just on the out-of-bounds line. But going back to talking about some of the upperclassmen, Coach Lynn Oldenburg said, we haven't talked about it. We probably won't until Sunday's match against Indiana. And then probably some tears will be shed. But it's been a fun five years. It's, it's all she's known as a coach and all she's known as the leaders of her personnel year in and year out. And that is a huge thing, which, as she had mentioned in that talk, just the fact that, and we've talked about it too, she's been here for five years. They've been here for five years. So she doesn't know what the court's going to look like without them on it, especially not only because players like Raider and Londa have been on this team for five years, but they've had such a huge impact as well. So they will be missed for the Buckeyes. And a huge block from Amani Bush, the far side pin. Luckily, if you want to look at it in the sense of losing some of the upperclassmen, 
what she has gotten out of Grace Egan, of course, Eloise Brandewee now in her sophomore season. Emmy Selman is a freshman. Tooman is a sophomore. Hasbrook is a freshman. It's a young roster, and that's good for the future in the Big Ten. It's a nice integration of those veterans, but also those younger players, as you mentioned, which makes that future brighter for Ohio State, knowing that there are other players to possibly pick up that mantle that she'll lose from those grad students. Kirsten Barton with her first kill on this one. Second, I should say. My apologies. And back to the line for Ensley. 3-3 in set three. Ohio State up 2-0. Tooman, back row, Londot. Just misses that back tape. It's always close with Londot. She knows her power and knows the placement. And that is an error for Londot, but she has a little bit of room to give with that. Only her second error tonight. She's still hitting at a 438 even after that miss. Ensley at a 238 hitting percentage. She's 5 of 21, back to the line. Raider hits it the wrong way. That's a point for the Huskies. They're up 5 3. It's a miscommunication there for the Buckeyes, and this is a crucial set for the Huskies to come back and stay alive. With how close they made set two, there's a lot to be taken from that. You get double the points you had in set one. You force Ohio State to take their first two timeouts of the game itself. I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. And the defenses look great, as you see right there with Bays and Wilson. And even with Barton trying to keep it alive. Joust for Haney. Back Barton, Buckeye reset. Selman, back row, save Ensley. That miscue between Egan and Londot gets the Huskies another point. And again, that miscommunication between Londot and Egan. Ohio State looked more off-tempo, off-balance in that last volley in the last few plays beforehand as well, which you have to think is probably part of the reason why Washington has this three-point lead in the third set. You can also see the, the connectiveness already. Coach Tui is playing very close to her far side. Just Barking out signals. Of course, she, the former middle blocker of the Huskies when they were in the Pac-12 in the late 90s, early 2000s. One of the best middle blockers in Pac-12 history. So she knows all about the rotational pieces, about playing defense, and staying connected when those volleys really go back and forth for, you know, what, seven-plus hits or so? can be difficult to stay in the game and keep your head in the game with those long volleys because it's easier to get lazy. Selman hits it off the arm of Molly Wilson. And a little bit of confusion on that Selman hit. Seems like Coach Chewy possibly thought it, that it went out of bounds, but they're giving the point to Ohio State. For the time being, Coach Chewy is not going to the green challenge card. Audra Wilmus back in for Maddie Ensley. So outsides for outside. The left side hitters just switching up their placement. Selman once more already has a handful of kills in eight. Barton with the backwards hit. Tooman, Raider, onto the knees of Howry. Bush over top. 6 4 Huskies lead set three. And now it's 6 5 after the soft touch. And that's double digit kills for Londot on the evening, and she's leading all hitters. Next closest is Emmy Selman with eight. And then Egan with six. And then you get to three Huskies tied with five of their own. Julia Hunt, Amani Bush, and Maddie Ensley. And there's a bit of a difference to look at as well as the amount of kills from Ohio State's top hitters as opposed to Washington's. 79 attacks to 29 kills for OSU. 75 attacks to 20 kills for UW. And the aces keep on coming for the Buckeyes. And that is a second service ace, or third, sorry, for Mia Tooman on the evening. Of their eight in total, eight to three is what that service ace differential looks like. Bayes sets it over the top, the big jump from Haney. And they give it to her. And that's Haney's first kill of the evening again. Not a lot. 
of attacks from the middle hitters on either of these teams tonight. Does that say something about the way that these two teams have been playing so far? I think it just shows that you're seeing more from their outside hitters and their right side hitters from the, than from the middle. But the blocks have been strong, so you know that they're still getting active in that middle blocker position. You just saw Raider try to get it with a block. Londot tries to finish it twice. She gets it the second time. But I think the way that these two teams started with playing is maybe you thought that the middle block position was really going to be involved, especially with Julia Hunt, 112 blocks coming into this one and Eloise Brandy with 108, and yet it is completely flipped on its head. And they've still been getting those blocks. Just It's been more on those outside positions because there haven't really been a lot of middle blockers who have been hitting so far in this game. So you're seeing them more shifting to those double blocks on the outside and the right side instead of any solos in the middle. Seven, all Bush with a strong hit. Bush again. Off the arms of the libero, Hasbrook. It's Bush's first kill in a little while. She now has six, and she's leading the Washington offense. This is an offense that, for Washington, started very slow. Of course, the 11 points in the first set, 22 in the second. Now, this set looks very picturesque to set number two, which can tell you a couple things. One, the adjustments have been made for both teams, and that it will probably get down to that wire-to-wire -wire ending we saw in set two. You read my mind because I was thinking the same thing. This looks a lot reminiscent to the last set, so that's going to... We're going to have to see a difference on what Washington's going to do in this third set because they started out a little bit more with the momentum starting out early in the second, and then let Ohio State come back and get the lead. So what adjustments are they going to make in this third to possibly take it? Use Barton. That's got to be the adjustment so far in this one. A lot of people thought she wasn't going to even play for the remainder of the season after her scared injury against Oregon. And yet she's now coming in here, and at a point of necessity, she's looked as strong as she always has in last year's 2023 Pac-12 all-freshman team member. She's been crucial. Zero errors on eight attempts. She's got four kills. She's hitting on a 500. So not only is she getting those numbers up, but she's hitting clean as well. But the Buckeyes and Egan keeping it close as well. That's something to look at as well, too. Barton, who came in late into this game, but already has four kills. Again, Bush is leading for the Huskies with six, and then you have Hunt and Inslee with five, and Barton's right up there. So she's coming in and she's making a presence quick. Set of 50% on the hit percentage as well. She's four of eight. And another service ace for Ohio State is Inslee. Can't keep the can on it. And that was a rare miscue by Inslee on that serve receive, because she does have 93 digs so far this season. She can play defense, but just didn't quite get low enough on that platform to get a good dig up. She's got four in this one as well. So she's been on both sides of the ball. But this Washington team, also the ones that they have a lot of power, they do that quite often as the attack errors because they are so outside heavy under Coach Tui. Sometimes that comes with the potential of being so powerful. And a lot of power on that one for Inslee, not quite able to get it low enough to stay in bounds, but she's been hitting a lot. She's got 22 total attempts. Only five kills on those attempts, though, at a 182 clip. Bays with the save to start it off. Back to Ensley. And Hunt right in the middle. We talked about the lack of mid-use in this one and just the free ball for the freshman out of Covington, Kentucky. And that one all set up by that nice attack by Ensley that went just right over the net for Hunt to execute. There's that attack by Ensley that set it all up and then Hunt with the kill. It's got to feel great as well to have most of her family in attendance as well. It's only about a two-hour drive from Covington, Kentucky. So very easy, especially compared to going to Seattle, which, let's be real here, that's not really drivable. So, I mean, but then again, that's kind of a Midwest thing to drive everywhere on vacation instead of take a flight. That's I, true. You, you could, I, I think you could agree with me more <laughs> on that one, but it's got to really feel nice for Julia Hunt to have her family behind her. And you can see her playing like that. She's got, she's leading that Huskies team still with Bush at six kills. 12-10 Ohio State leads. That's the Egan kill. And that time, watch your eyebrows. Ensley fires it right back. 
And that's exactly what the Huskies need. They need her to start heating up on that outside. We talked about in the first set how crucial it was going to be for the Buckeyes to get Londot. And on the other end, it's Inslee, those two veteran players for both teams. And the reaction time you have to have to even make contact with the ball is pretty impressive in its own right. Egan starts it to and Selman. Egan saves on the Buckeye reset offensively. Barton saved it right behind her Ensley. Selman, the freshman, met by two blocks. Tuman right back to the freshman. Off three fingertips of three different Huskies. And Selman had a few tries that didn't quite go. But you can tell that she's starting to become more comfortable and more of an experienced player because those two, those few opportunities that got touched by the block and didn't quite go for a kill, didn't shake her, and she pulled off the kill on that last one. Selman is within one of Londot to lead the match in kills. Selman 10, of course, Londot 11. And then you have Grace Egan with seven. And then beneath that, it's Tuman and Brandewi with two of their own. And Tuman is an attack-heavy setter. You don't see that too often, especially when looking at some of the roster, like with Molly Wilson as a setter. She's got nine total kills. Tuman coming into this one has 38. And that's what makes her so sneaky, too, is you never know when she might do that trick play where she pushes the ball over without looking and gets a point. And talk about that push down. Amani Bush just did that right to Tuman. Normally it's over the middle when she gets to do it. We have not seen it today. But we definitely could. She's been prone to do it at least twice to three times a match if she can find a seam in the defense. That's what makes it hard for the defense is you have to be aware of her having that play in her pocket. Londot flip side after Selman. They say it hits out of bounds after going off the arm of Barton. Londot with her 12th kill on 23 attempts. She's hitting so clean. A 435 percentage. She also has seven digs, a block, two service aces, and an assist. So she's filling out the stat sheet. 14 to 12, Ohio State leads set three. Almost got the head of one of the assistant coaches, Michael Brunston. Bush tried to save it with the punch. It's a service ace for the Buckeyes, and they just need 10 to take it. Mia Tuman now with four service aces on the evening. She's been hot from the line. Another timeout taken for Coach Tui and UW. And we'll take it with them. Ohio State up 15-12. And you called that one for Lond on a nice cross-court kill to the corner. 16-12, Ohio State leads. They won the first set 25-11 and the second 25-22. Now on the start of a 3-0 scoring run. Bush met at the top with the dual block for the Buckeyes. That time pushed over Barton. Selman to try again. She got Barton out of system, but keeps it alive. Bays has a punch of her own, but too late. And this is even more so starting to look like that second set. Ohio State pulling away with the lead. They're on that 4-0 scoring run, up five. But then on the flip side of that, Washington at one point won on a 6-0 scoring run. So something to keep in mind is it's now in this midst of it all, eight points away from OSU from taking this match against Washington. Selman bat down right to the knee of Barton. The switch up in power and speed for the Buckeyes has worked for them so far. But on the flip side, the defense has stayed strong throughout it. Wilson set up. Barton hit. Save again, Wilmus. Flip side, Bush. Still alive. Tuman. Lantot off the block. Hasbrook. High ball. There it goes. Timeout, Washington. Another big kill there by Londot as it falls on the line. And then long volley. Those have been 
common in this game so far. The Buckeye hot streak continues. We'll take a timeout along with them. Buckeyes up two sets to none. Back out of the break, Buckeyes up by six, 18 to 12. Sarah Sharp, Boston crew along with you and the rest of the crew here in Columbus at the Cavelli Center. Grace Egan has had herself a game. Just three kills short of a double-double. And those seven kills, but yeah, you gotta look at that defense too for Grace Egan, 10 digs. She has just been such a presence so far for Ohio State. She's got 114 digs this season. Average is about two digs per set. 142 kills coming into the game as well. Her career high was 17 at Bowling Green earlier in the season. And even had eight kills against Rutgers just a couple short days ago. Tooman back to the line with the softball. And right back into the thick of things. Hasbrook sets it up and the blocks keep it down. That late reaction from Haney and Barton, but they got it and they're happy about it anyway. And that was a big block for the Huskies, especially against a player who's been so hot in Londot. 14 of 27. Well, of 28 after that swing. And this is about the point in that second set where Washington started to get closer and have their scoring run after a timeout. Lauren Bays, the libero, back to serve, much on the other side. Londa, that time she switches corners with the same outcome. Another Husky point. And a rare miss by Londa, but she was hitting that one from the outside. She does usually hit from the right side. We'll see if what happened in set two stays true in set number three. Reset Wilson. Barton tried it, couldn't buy it. Buckeye point. And I just want to credit Riley Rader on that one. A really fast push set by Tooman to Rader in the middle, but she still got her hand on it, got that one over the net, and set that up for the Ohio State point. Buckeyes have been playing a little bit slower, but you said there they sped it up and it worked for them. Should they keep on doing that as this one gets closer? I think it's good to kind of shift back and forth. It's nice to play quick, but also there are times when you need to slow the tempo down, so it really just depends on what works best for them the rest of the set. Yeah, well, the defense is working already. Buckeyes just need five. Ohio State getting really close, but again, they got about to this point. It almost looked like it was sealed in the second set. If I'm not mistaken, it was 13 to 21, and then Washington made their run back again, so it's not completely out of, out of their territory. And the same exact thing happened like you called it on cue. Coach Tui takes another timeout. Buckeyes just need five to take the match over UW. Buckeyes only a handful of points away from taking this third and potential final set. We're going to look at the remaining schedule for Washington. They go to Penn State, then USC at home and Purdue at home. You see those numbers right there, number four, number 21, and number eight in the country. This might be the hardest final third I've seen in the entirety of the conference. It is a huge final schedule for Washington, and that's why this game was so crucial for them to go in with that momentum into those next three ranked teams. Ohio State's final three isn't a cakewalk either. Indiana, and then at Wisconsin, at Minnesota. So this final half and the final third mainly of this season is gonna be a test for both of these programs. Someone back, just five more for her side. 
But a high ball and the service error, and the Huskies within five. That ties Ohio State up to Washington on the service errors, both with five. Amani Bush out of Campbell River, Canada. Red-shirted last year and is having an incredible year so far, trying to keep it up. She keeps it on the defensive side, too. Barton, dive save, Hasbrook. Egan with the jump and the punch, but the dive from Bays. Barton again off the fingertips. And Barton, who we talked about, needs to be active on that outside for the Huskies if they want to stay alive in this third set. Talked about Barton slowly climbing into the top three of kills for Washington in this game. Bush leads with eight, then Julia Hunt and Maddie Ensley with six. Barton has four of them currently. Bush to keep this one going. Buckeye's going to try to win the side out. Somehow kept alive, but not for long. They do win that side out, and just four more are needed. There's an example of getting those middles active. Riley Rader with her second kill, and Ohio State using her a little bit more as an attacker in this third set. Buckeyes going back to their bigger personnel package. Olivia Hasbrook, the libero at 5'8", steps out. Raider at 6'2", the middle blocker, steps back in as a serve specialist. She looked good earlier in this one. Much of the same will be expected. Wilson set up. Barton back to Raider. Tooman with her own. And a soft touch. Sometimes she doesn't need all that power if she gets the same outcome. Great awareness by Londot. Saw the opening in that coverage. And again, like you said, didn't really need to hit that one hard, but just found where the opening was, and it was effective. If you're Coach Tui now in this, you could see arms folded, walking back and forth. She's pacing, realizing the situation her team is in, still itching and clawing only towards the NCAA championship and, of course, the, the Big Ten tourney hopes as well. And again, this is an atmosphere that this team is not used to, so you have to credit that into their possible struggles tonight. But Barton has looked like one of the glimmering lights for this Huskies lineup so far. Coming in basically halfway through the second set and has now solidified herself as she's found her footing. Audra Wilmis, who started, has mainly found a little bit more time in defensive positions. And Barton with her fifth kill again, just itching closer up there to the top for the Washington team. And then now you have Inslee back in for the Huskies as well on that outside as Barton moves to the back row. Do we potentially see a change as well? Zoria Heard, we saw her in earlier, the backup libero out of Rowlett, Texas. Can we see her in a potential spot where they need the defense to start? I think it kind of depends on how the rest of this set goes because they don't really have a lot of time to be making a lot of adjustments. So unless she really thinks it's a last-minute effort possibly to bring in Heard. Looks like Tui. Coach Tui, that is, is going to stay strong with her line. Buckeyes two away. They do have Inslee push back a little bit farther on that defense as well to help. Londot service, but it's an error. Flip it back to the Huskies, and they get the point. And now UW is also going to their bigger package. They take out their libero, Lauren Baines, and bring in the middle blocker, Elise Haney. And the Buckeyes flip on their side. Their libero comes back in. Hasbrook for their middle blocker and Raider. That's just a possibility. Hunt, too, is serving right now. So once she's done with her serve rotation, she'll most likely come back out for their other, for their libero to come back in. And you called it. You called it exactly as it's happening. And the Buckeyes just a single point away from keeping this sheet clean and sweeping the team out of Seattle. The Cavelli crowd on their feet for this possible match point. Service error by Egan, 24-19. It'll stay put. Two late service errors by Ohio State, so they're lucky that they have a cushion in this third set. We've seen the Huskies go on runs in this one. At one point, a 6-0 scoring run, and Molly Wilson is going to try to do it here. 
Tuman. Mondon will try to end it, and she does. Big time power from the grad student starting her final home weekend, and the Buckeyes sweep the Huskies. And no better person to finish that off for Ohio State than the grad Emily Londa with her 16th kill to finish off the night in a sweep for Ohio State. This was a big game for both. Ohio State coming in, you needed to keep the heat going. You came out a 0-3 loss against Illinois on the 9th, a 1-3 loss against Maryland at home on the 15th, and then the 3-0 win against Rutgers. Coach Jen Flynn Oldenburg said, the momentum has changed. We need to end how we started on that hot streak. And they did it here against a team that is only starting an even harder final back third of their season. A huge win for Ohio State and Washington going away from this one. Have to reevaluate their next three games. As you mentioned, such a strong schedule they have against Penn State, USC, and Purdue coming up after this loss against the Buckeyes. It has been a fun one, but I think we've done all the damage we could. Sarah Sharp, Austin Kroom, and the rest of the... Bro, yeah, I'm gonna do all my stuff, bro. 